Hey guys, welcome to the finale of Let's Play Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Now, now we're gonna be heading into the um, chaotic realm. First, we gotta go up to here at the Floating Gardens, where we fight a old friend before we, um, you know, delve into the uh, path of chaos. By the way, that was this that was a Black Panther soul. It allows you to dash really fast. And it's low on it. Low MP cost. Little to none. Stop! Oh, hi, Julius. Yep, you are Belmont. Makes sense. Welcome to die. Yeah, Julius is quite a fight. He's... Pretty much like any other Belmont, he uses a whip, sub weapons. He's he uses he starts using sub weapons kind of halfway through the fight, but right now he he kind of just relies on his whip and slide ki and kicks and flying kicks. That, that's really it. One of the best weapons he uses is the flame demon soul. Can do a decent amount of damage to him. I find it to be very useful. And it keeps me at a good distance too. Like, just hitting him with your sword will not do as much, usually, more often than not. But yeah, he's not the hardest fight in the world, tr truth be told, but he's no cakewalk. So, you know, best just keep away and throw fireballs, so... He will start mixing up his- yep, he's, like, there, he- When he does that flying jump, you- He has, like, kind of an invisibility frame, I guess you'd say, where you can actually jump through him and avoid the attack if you time it right. I do it a few times. So you'll probably see it more. Anyway, every time he uh, kind of like w wails in pain, he you know that he's kind of getting that much closer to dying. I wouldn't say dying, but... Well, we'll see. Oh, and he also does that Akuma-style teleport, because he is... because I guess he can? Honestly, I don't remember any Belmont being able to do that. I mean, I know they could slide, but I didn't know they had the power of the Satsuino Hado. But whatever the case may be, Julius never had his game, so I guess we could assume that he has the Satsuino Hado, which wouldn't really make any sense since he works with a side of good. Time paradox! Eh, not really. Yeah, it's kind of a boring fight right now. I really hope he... And he starts throwing the sub weapon soon. Doing all the really cool stuff. Yeah, generally about his design, I, I really like it. I, I like it. It's a lot more like, I guess you could say, I guess modern. Like, I guess that is a pretty good representation of a modern Belmont. Oh, oh, here he goes. Uh, he's using Grand Cross. Now, what I like about when he does this, you want to escape with the Black Panther, but I like what I like when he does with that is he makes all the debris in the background fall down. It's a really cool effect. And his Grand Cross just looks really cool. So, yeah, now he's going to start mixing. He's going to start doing his little mix ups. That little Kuma bastard. <laughs> he's going to be throwing all of his sub weapons at you, along with whipping you. And that, he's just generally faster. The sub weapons aren't necessarily hard to dodge, they're just kind of hard to predict which one he's going to use. Because the animation for him throwing the axe and the cross is kind of similar. And he throws holy water too on occasion. Not really any knives, surprisingly. I guess it wouldn't, I guess it wouldn't be that fair if he threw knives, but I'm pretty sure Ju that as a Belmont, Julius would probably have knives on it. Whatever, he has the boomerang of holy awesomeness. And I gotta say, I like his uh, throwing axes. Red's a pretty cool color palette for him. And there he went, throwing the holy water. Honestly, not that hard to dodge, as long as you just jump over it. Can do a lot of damage, um, like, if you, if you actually do touch it. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we're almost done fighting him. Uh, 
how to use some wind up to use more uh, fireballs. See, I, I could fight fire with fire. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I know, that was terrible. But we won. I've had enough! I can yell too, Caps Locks. So he's holding back on him. He knew he was uh, Soma, so I guess he was uh, giving him a test. I guess you could say a loyalty test. I'm not even sure. Maybe a test to see if he can actually beat the chaos. And that, and that, by the way, is kind of an interesting uh, thing that he brought up there. That's actually another ending I found out, and I will be showing that. So join me in a second when I get restock on potions. And Julius miraculously disappeared. <laughs> you know. Anyway, let's go into the chaotic realm. I just want to forewarn you guys that when you enter this area, there's no map. Don't. Uh, the, you can't go back and buy items, I don't think. And yeah, you're pretty much stuck here. So just bear that in mind before you arrive into the chaotic realm. Because once you go in, you can't go back. Now the chaotic realm is an interesting. Um, area. Not my favorite area, but it's interesting. They take... My main it, beef with it is that it... I mean, it, I guess it makes sense in the context of things that it takes, um... Like, a lot of, uh... I mean, I mean the, the, the game does have limited storage space, or they're trying to be artistic about it, but, yeah. I, uh, a lot of the rooms are just palette swaps of other rooms, truth be told. I just skipped over that because I was trying to figure out where to go, had to remember, so... Stopped recording for a second there. Anyway, yeah, these rooms uh, don't be tricked. You can't go over there. You won't go over there. I just for kind of forgot the layout, so I just keep going in those rooms. Anyway, you find the usual assortment of baddies in here. You got your lubricants, and uh, there's a few new enemies too. Uh, some of them are pretty cool. You got your beam skeletons, or I wouldn't. Thankfully, they're not horribly placed like they were in the uh, arena. Which was to say they were hard to dodge. We're gonna just ignore this guy because as I've said before we need that uh, mantle. We need the killer mantle soul to uh, even think about killing him and unless if I want to hit him like 9,999 times with my sword which is not gonna happen. That's what she said. Anyway I'm just looking through my souls because I thought I actually had the killer mantle soul but I actually don't so. Regardless, we're moving on, killing skeletons with our Dracula fireballs. Oh, look at this annoying prick. They placed him really annoyingly in this level. Alright, get down here. Get down. <laughs> what an idiot. What a maroon. What a fool. Why would you jump off a cliff like that, you moronic moron? Well, then again, he does not. He is basically just an animated set of bones. I guess he doesn't really have a brain, or does he? It's something I never really knew. I'll let you think about that one. Do skeletons have brains? I'm guessing not, but. Hey, that skeleton has a cross on his head for some reason. Yeah, some reason. And the gladiators are no longer as much of a threat to us, since we can just hit them with our uber sword and um, our awesome fireballs. I mean, they're still annoying, but they're not as annoying as they used to be. Honestly, this sword just makes the game so much easier, as I've said before. And, um, even the last boss, as annoying as that thing is, it, it makes, you'll be thankful that you have it for that boss, because then at least you'll stand a chance. Yeah, I'm just gonna, just telling you right now, I am horrible at this area. You see me do relatively well in every other area, but I, I don't die in the area, but it's just a pain in the ass. I, I think I did better than I usually do here. They put a lot of nasty enemies in, like this giant skeleton. Well, he's relatively easy to beat. But yeah, they, they, they really 
put a lot of nasty enemies in this in this area, like Alistor. Oh god, this guy. Hey, got level up. Nice. Yeah, this guy's. I thought I thought he was dead for a second there, but um, yeah, basically, he. This guy's kind of like uh, this one other enemy we saw before, which was like an invisible fencer. However, with a bigger attack range and more health, and a lot more damage. All right, I think he's dead. So let's move up. And there's nothing there, as I expected. Yeah, you can't get hurt by Alistor's shadow. Much like that ghost fencer. But yeah, let's move on down. I can't believe we're still fighting slimes at this point. Those things are barely even a threat to us anymore. Why are we still fighting them? Yeah, they kind of threw in like a bunch of a, a cavalcade of different enemies uh, in this um, area. And that, I guess I could see why they threw them in there now, because I got poisoned. Yep, this was like the room before the Chimera, and the save room's even in the same spot. Yeah, this is a pretty linear area. There's really not that much uh, branching off. There's really one straight path, maybe one or two rooms to the side that will actually have something. Whoa! And that mimic certainly wasn't it. But yeah, all the rooms are structured in a linear kind of fashion. You go from point A to point B. There's one path you take to the boss, not multiple. Since you really can't go back, I guess it makes sense. And we got two kills for one. Nice. Ah, look at this. Satan Mega Level 3. And you are dead, Satan Mega Level 3. May you never return to this world again. And that wasn't a mimic for once. Thank you, game. Thank you for actually showing mercy on me and giving me money at a time I don't even need money. Because I can't even go back to the shop and get anything. Thank you, game. You're being considerate to me. Give, not giving me any potions and give me money instead. I just think that's dumb design. I, I don't know. So yeah, let's, um... I was trying to figure out if I could get up here without, uh... I could... Uh, you know what? I, I need to put on the school of soul. There we go. Now we can look, go underwater and doesn't afraid of anything. Triton only does like one damage to us now, so that's great. And these bo these fish heads aren't as much of a threat anymore, which is awesome. Like it's fun it's fun to just go back into the areas with all your souped up equipment and souls and just wreak havoc on all the uh, pathetic little enemies that think that they can stand a chance, but they really can't. Like, it's, it's hilarious to fight giant enemies that used to be, like, a pain in the ass, but now you can one-hit them. But, uh, yeah, now we're gonna climb up this little, uh, cavey area. And end up in this room, where there's a succubi. And it's a dumb succubi, because she's not moving anywhere and getting hit by my sword, which can apparently penetrate through, uh, flooring of an elevator. I'm not gonna question physics in Castlevania, though. They pretty much don't exist. Alright, skipping this in a second. Any second now. Any second now. No, this guy really did take a while to fight, so it will be skipped, I assure you. Yeah. It kinda took longer than I expected to uh, skip it. I guess I had the recording on for too long. I didn't realize it, but either way, I'm going to be fighting another one of those enemies soon, by the way. Thankfully, he doesn't take anywhere near as long to kill, so, and, and you don't find too many of them, so I don't really skip those fights. So let's fly up with our bat soul and um, go up here. Oh, it's water. At first I thought it was air. Alright, avoid the Alistor. Avoid the, yeah, there we go. And here's that armor I was talking about, the Shadow Knight. Pretty much like the um, uh, final guard, but I guess more powerful, just with less defense. I can do 316 on this thing, 319 rather, on this thing, no problem.